I think life sciences is one of the single most interesting questions humans have ever faced because we can now read, write, and edit life. And that's a big deal. There's nothing we've ever done that is as much of a superpower and there's nothing that's going to change the world as much as the ability to alter life. So I think as we think about the future of humanity, we really have to think in terms of the ultimate selfie, which was the object that has gotten the farthest from Earth is the Voyager. And it took a picture from several billion miles out. And guess what? You almost couldn't see Earth. We were this tiny, tiny little pixel on this light band of the Milky Way and dark universe behind it. What that picture tells you is that we're living in a very fragile planet. So if we don't diversify humanity, then we're betting absolutely everything on the equivalent of 17 black on the roulette wheel. So if we want to become an intrastellar civilization as opposed to an intrasolar civilization, we really have to redesign ourselves in pretty radical ways. And when you edit life, then you, you can alter what life does, and that scales in a way that almost nothing else humans have done scales because this software makes its own hardware. Well, let me unpack that. If I program a couple of bacteria, I'll have a billion bacteria. And what that means is you're going to see an industrial revolution on a scale that you can't even begin to imagine, and it's going to scale fast. There's just a whole lot of different ways you can change the world. And you can do it through an NGO, you can do it through politics, you can do it through social media, you can do it through culture. I just happen at this point to be in the investment world. And investments are a very interesting application of relatively small amounts of money to big ideas. And venture capital is a particularly interesting place to sit because if you can be present at the creation, it's a great deal of fun. There's a lot of kids out there who think they're going to be the next Zuckerberg. And there's very few of those. I prefer to deal with 30, 40, 50 year olds. It isn't sexy, but they're serial entrepreneurs. They've made a lot of mistakes. They've grown companies. They've sold companies. They're mature and they're ready to do it again. They've got to be hungry. Because if you don't have a vibrant, growing, destructive, constructive business environment. You can't live on the old coal mines. You can't live on, you were born on top of oil. Those countries tend to be disasters these days. If you take the top 15 most valuable companies in the US in 2000, decentralized networks of kids come together and just take out huge businesses or entire industries like the tax cab industry, which we've seen recently with Uber and Lyft. There's a wonderful movie called The Graduate with a very young Dustin Hoffman. There's an iconic scene in it where the old guy takes the young college graduate out by the pool, puts his arm around him and says one word, just one word, plastics. Unfortunately, he was completely wrong because the word should have been silicon and Silicon Valley grew out just as that movie was being released. So if that kid had heard that, maybe he'd be a peer of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, and instead the poor guy ended up being a Tupperware salesman. One of the things people should be thinking about is what's the right word, and that word I think is life code. Because life code is going to change every business on this planet. It's going to modify how we make things and where we make things, just as the digital revolution changed every single thing we touch.